and I'll, if you want to reply, although you're on, on mute, if you want to reply in your home with the words in bold, that would be great. So let's, let's pause and then we'll make a start. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. His name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Now, this is always slightly tricky, but I'm going to attempt, I'm going to attempt to light uh, candles. She's got a minute to win it. Okay. Uh, remember that this is the fifth, well, not the fifth. We actually, because it's Christmas Day, we will be lighting five candles, hopefully. And we light the middle one for Christmas Day itself. Now, you may or may not have a candle lit at home, but maybe later on, as you eat, you might like you might like to, to light a candle at home so that you remember that the light has come. Okay, that's great. And we will move, so I'll put that to one side and we will say this prayer together. If you remember that it'd be helpful if you were on mute, that's great. So we say together, Lord Jesus Christ, your birth at Bethlehem draws us to kneel in wonder at heaven touching earth. Accept our heavenly praise as we worship you, our saviour and eternal God. Amen. And we're going to start our service now with a, a saying sorry to God, that we start by saying sorry to God so that as we come before him, the rest of the service uh, we are people who have been forgiven and who are in a good relationship a good relationship with god our father so again i'll say the words and you can finish each each bit with the words in bold at the bottom god our father we come to you in sorrow for our sins for turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives. Father, forgive us, save us, and help us. For behaving just as we wish, without thinking of you. Father, forgive us, save us, and help us. For failing you by what we do, and think and say, Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For letting ourselves be drawn away from you by temptations in the world about us, Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For living as if we were ashamed to belong to your son. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. May the father forgive us by the death of his son and strengthen us to live in the power of the spirit all our days. Amen. We are going to sing now. Now you can keep your you can keep your your thing on mute, and you can sing your heart out. The words will be on the screen, so please do sing along as we worship God by singing "Once in Royal David's City."
was fantastic. Well done, everybody. I could see lots of mouths moving, so some great singing. We're coming now to our readings, and Carol and then Susan are going to read to us, and then Caroline will lead straight on into our talk. Now, you might want to change your view later to speak of you from gallery view so that you get a big image of Caroline. Let's have Carol. Thank you. I don't know, Carol, if you're on mute still. Is Carol there? Carol, we can't hear you. I, I don't know if you're on mute. She says she can't unmute it. Okay. Rachel, are you able to unmute Carol or not? I can only um, ask her to unmute. I can't unmute her. So. Okay. Right, I'm there. Sorry, Bruce. You Brilliant. That's great. Yeah. Carol, over to you. <laughs> right. The reading today is taken from Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 to 4. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things and through whom also he made the universe. The son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. So he became as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is superior to theirs. This is the word of the Lord. Gospel of John, chapter one. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. <clears throat> he himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world. And though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Thank you. I wonder, Rachel, if you could, that's better. Um, thank you very much. Um, if you've got on speak of you, you might get a big version of me now, which might be better if I'm preaching. Can I say, first of all, how lovely it is to see some old faces and new ones uh, to Trish, uh, to Ian Nutt, who would have been playing, of course, normally for us in church, and uh, Nigel and Nicola, lovely that you've joined us from Cornwall. This is the wonderful thing about Zoom. It may not be as we'd like to have a service, but it is amazing what we can do with it. Now, I don't know if you've got the Comfort and Joy app or any booklets yet, but Archbishop Rowan Williams asked a question uh, this week. He asked, what glimpses of glory 
uh, of the glo God's glory might delight your heart and change your perspective this Christmas. What glimpses of God's glory might delight your heart and change your perspective this Christmas? And I ask that well aware that we are not having the Christmases we normally do, none of us. And some of us find ourselves on our own for the first time. Maybe we, this year we've experienced all kinds of setbacks, frustrations, disappointments, and indeed a heartbreak as well. But when we hear that reading from John 1 that Susan read for us, we hear again of the wonder of the incarnation, the word made flesh. You know, it's, it's, it's just incredible, isn't it, uh, that God made himself small to be born as one of us. And in that chapter of John, we don't get the narrative of how Jesus came to be born and the story which the other gospels give us, but we get, uh, if you like, a poetic version of the significance of his being born, that Jesus was with God before creation and in time as well. It was through him we understand that he, the world was created, that he is uh, in our, our first reading, uh, the exact representation of God. I don't know if uh, those of you from King's North Church remember, it seems like another lifetime ago, our Lent course on Ruth Valerio's book, um, Looking at Creation and God in Creation. And here we hear that uh, God spoke creation into being, which we see in Genesis 1, but actually he did it through the word, which was Christ. He is also the light and life for us. If you suffer from SAD like me, then light is very important. And I have lots of candles around the house at Christmas as well. The light that isn't overcome by darkness. That's something we can take with us into this strangest of Christmases, isn't it? But, you know, the incarnation itself um, is a stumbling block to many. It was to the Greeks because to them you couldn't have something divine and sacred mixing with the mundane. It just didn't happen. So that would have been a scandal and a heresy. And to Jewish people, um, as John goes on to say that the word made flesh and made his dwelling among us. Well, that would have been a complete scandal to them, because to them, God dwelt in special sacred places like the temple. And the word in Greek for dwelling among us is the word tabernacled, which to Jewish hearers would have brought to mind the tabernacle in the desert where God was. And there were lots and lots of rules of how that was to be made. It was a supremely holy place. Uh, but how could God then somehow make his dwelling among us? That tabernacle was for the Israelites in the desert. And I want to suggest that this year has been a complete desert for many of us. So how again can we see glimpses of God's glory in the desert that might be 2020? We might be looking forward to getting rid of 2020. And maybe the new year will take on a special significance for us things surely can only get better with the vaccine around the corner. But I wonder if there is another stumbling block for us when so many people might think, well, God is only really when we worship together in church. What have we learned this year about God being with us in our homes? He has dwelt among us and been with us through all the setbacks that we have had. And I also feel, too, that his glory can be glimpsed in us sometimes simply putting one foot in front of the other, in enduring and keeping going when things get really tough and we get another setback, another lockdown, another disappointment. But we lean on God and turn to him for his strength. He is with us. He comes to identify with us being born in a stable, in all the disappointment and setbacks of this year. And also, we can't save ourselves without him being born among us. His saving work on the cross and resurrection could not have happened. We can wonder at that as well. 
And then, of course, our, our own humanity is affirmed in the incarnation. We see glimpses of glory among the people around us. Also in people of faith, like the boxes of hope that have gone out. And also among people of no faith and other faiths, because we're all born uh, and created in God's image. I rejoice to hear that the local Sikh temple was able to provide 800 meals for the poor truckers uh, uh, around Dover and Manston. And I know Bruce might have something to share of the, the, the churches in, in Dover looking to reach out to the poor truckers who aren't able to get back for Christmas. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. Other glimpses of glory, creativity in our IT, uh, people like Rachel and, and Chris Myers, new gifts being raised up, the joy of interacting with children in our Zoom Chris Dingle on Saturday, uh, so many others. And I'd love to hear other examples of God's glory being glimpsed despite everything from you. Send me an email, pop me a line. I'd love to hear of what glimpses of glory you have had this Christmas. And I want to suggest that we actually take time this Christmas, the strangest of Christmases, where we actually probably have more time not to be distracted, but to ponder in stillness and in prayer. There's a Facebook post that I have posted and others have too. And it goes like this. The first Christmas was pretty simple. It's okay if yours is as well. So for our stripped back deconstructed Christmases, let's take time to ponder and wonder at the word made flesh that made his dwelling among us. What glimpses of God's glory might delight your hearts also? And that question came from the Comfort and Joy booklets, which you can also get as an app. Simply Google Comfort and Joy and get to download the free app for yourself. You'll get daily devotions now, uh, between now and uh, Epiphany, the 6th of January. So let's just take time now to have a moment of stillness, to ponder afresh in new ways the glory of God being flesh and dwelling among us. God of glory, open our eyes to see your presence today and to find as we do that our lives are filled with love and delight towards you and the world you have made. Please reveal yourself in your glory afresh in this new and strange place we find ourselves. Amen. Thank you, Caroline. Uh, we're going to sing now. We're going to sing Joy to the World and maybe use these words that we, we, we can sing at home to, to reflect a little bit on where we can see glimpses of God's glory around us. Oh, oh, oh. 
Right, we're coming to our creed. Now, I found this creed. It's a little bit different from ones we've used before, but Jackie and I are going to say um, it bits in turn. But I just wonder if, as you listen to us declaring the truth of what we believe through these words, whether there's one word or phrase that might particularly resonate with you that you might like to write down or remember. And, and maybe that becomes another way for you to glimpse something of God's glory in the days to come. So Jackie's going to start. I believe that Christmas is more than a time for parties and ornaments. It's a time for remembering Christ and the incarnation of God's love in human flesh. I believe there are gifts more important than the ones under the Christmas tree such as the things we teach our children, the way we share ourselves with friends, and the industry with which we set about reshaping the world in our time. I believe that the finest carols are often sung by the poorest voices, from hearts made warm by the wonder of the season. I believe in the angel's message that we should not be afraid. The babe of Bethlehem is able to overcome all our anxieties and insecurities. I believe that prayer and stillness are good ways of discovering Christmas. If I wait in silence, I will experience the presence of the one born in the stable, for he lives today as surely as he lived then. I believe in going away from Christmas as the wise men went, another way. I want to be different when these days are past, more centered, more caring, more concerned for the world Christ entered. I believe God wants this, and I believe God will help me. Amen. Amen indeed, thank you so much. Maybe there's something there for you to hold on to that will help you and encourage you. We're going to pray and Jackie is now going to lead us in that. Let us pray. Lord, this Christmas, help us to remember the people of the world who are in need as we celebrate this Christmas day. Giver of hope. Pour out your blessing on the church all over the world. And may your Holy Spirit guide us and grant that may we, we may pursue truth, unity, peace and righteousness. We pray especially for the church in Britain at the moment, being tested by difficult questions and being challenged by disunity. We lift to you, Lord, those we know who are working overseas with the aim of sharing your gospel, as well as those who are persecuted for their faith in other countries. We pray for our leaders. We give thanks for the Archbishop of Canterbury, Bishop Rose, and we pray for the work of our parish. And we remember Caroline and Bruce and Jeremy and the other clergy and lay leaders, and for our own ministries as we live our lives to serve you. Giver of hope, bring your comfort and joy. Giver of hope, pour out your blessing on all those charged with responsibility of government at this difficult time, both here in Britain and all over the world, that they might rule with integrity and wisdom and that people may honour one another and seek the common good. Giver of hope, bring your comfort and joy. Giver of hope, pour out your blessing upon those who will not enjoy this Christmas season. For those alone or struggling without being able to see loved ones. May they feel your presence more nearly than ever before. And we think of those who've been trapped by the travel restrictions and are spending this special day trapped in lorries or vans. Giver of hope, bring your comfort and joy. 
giver of hope, pour out your blessing on all who are troubled and anxious, sick in mind, body or spirit, and for those who love and care for them. Give them your courage and your hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of salvation. And we think of those who have received positive COVID tests this week and for those who are recovering from surgery or receiving treatment for cancer. And in a moment of quiet, we remember anyone who's special to us who needs our prayers. Giver of hope, bring your comfort and joy. Giver of hope, pour out your blessing upon all who have loved lost ones this year. Bring comfort to those who are grieving and may their faith be strengthened as they look to you, the hope of the world. And again, we lift up to you in a moment of silence, those who we are aware of who've suffered loss. giver of hope, bring your comfort and joy. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. That's great. I don't know that there are very many notices. Just to say there will be a simple online service uh, on Sunday. And I think in the notice sheet that was sent out and in the email Caroline sent, there were also links to other options for you. Yeah. Also, uh, the Zoom chat um, at 11 o'clock, Bruce, too. If anybody wants to, to join me at 11 o'clock, uh, there's a link to that, too. OK, and then there are services um, next next Sunday, the third. Is that the third Sunday, the third? There's a Zoom service as well. Um, we'd like to thank quite a lot of people who've who've helped with with this service. Rachel has done a fantastic job again. And many thanks. Many thanks to all who have uh, helped us. And that includes anyone who just joined us. It was lovely to, to meet with you and uh, and to be to be able to worship with you caroline is there anything else we need to add i don't think so except to say that bruce you are off next week on annual leave and i will be taking the week after so uh, i am around this coming week so do be in touch if you need to okay great we are going to sing again then. We are going to sing Hark the Herald. So again, on mute, sing your heart out for the Lord. Okay.
It's been lovely to worship together. Um, just to say um, that Zoom chat is, is on Sunday, not today. So if you want to hang around briefly at the end, just to say goodbye, please do. Right. So may the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the perseverance of the wise men, the obedience of Joseph and Mary, and the peace of the Christ child, be yours this Christmas, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace. Proclaim the word made flesh. Glory, thanks, and praise to God. Amen. Lovely. Thank you so much for sharing with us. It's been lovely. To